Hey, back again. Been super busy, haven't taken much video, but this is still a pretty cool project I could put together. The job here was a do-it-yourself driveway and road. Some spots and four to five feet of wet black dirt on top of clay. Now the whole property isn't like that, but where I wanted the road was. This video will cover how I built the road subsurface and how I topped it. I'll go over the process of what this road can now handle, which might be shocking. The main dirt drive here had decades of traffic on it, so thankfully it was already packed well directly towards the house. So that just needed a little leveling off, some sand and top dressing. The rest gets more complicated. You can see here I have a cement slab poured just outside the attached garage and front door tying it all together. Between the 30 by 30 attached garage, the 30 by 30 pole barn, and the slab out front, that was nearly $20,000 in concrete, and that's just the floors. The main drive alone from the street connected to the slab would have been nearly $15,000 again, let alone the roundabout down by the shop, around the attached garage, or anything later deeper in the property, and I didn't see any value in laying out that kind of cash for what you'd get. Not to mention my concerns with having loaded dump trucks come whenever I want, as those weight loads can vary drastically depending on the material and moisture. Either way, they will weigh tons, literally. Spending huge amounts of money to have edges broken off by big trucks didn't interest me either and was a real concern. Being able to get any material dropped off easily is a big plus when you have the property to play around with it. In comes millings. At $250 per dump truck for the lower grade stuff like grade twos and $500 per truck of high grade stuff, which is the finer stone, you can do a thousand feet of drive for under $10,000. I can't remember my exact cost, but I'd guess it's somewhere near 20 trucks, some leading pup trucks in the mix. And that's just for millings. I've also probably got another 10 trucks or so for sand. So for the low grade stuff for me, I had a hookup, but I assume if you called an asphalt company, they might hook you up too. But I basically have an entire Wendy's parking lot that they resurfaced. They, they grind off the top and that's my low grade. So I use that as my base for the millings. And then for to top everything, I bought from their yard uh, grade ones, which are the finer stones with the millings dust, which helps adhere everything together. And obviously, I'll clean this up a little bit more later and get some of those bigger chunks out. But I just wanted to show you the lower grade stuff just means it's not as clean. The higher grade stuff means it's finer and cleaner and has more of the, the millings dust, which binds it, like I said. While working on the house and pole barn, you can see how soft the dirt is on the side yard. The sky track was sinking two to three feet and building a road and building there was a little tricky but in the end well worth the effort as it really opens up and properly utilizes the property but without taking the proper steps to to really build this road in it would just be a mess every single year now let's get into how i did it the process the first step i did was every building we demolished here that had any foundation i pulled all that to save there was also a huge stone fireplace in the house. I tore that out with lots of stone and cement. And any additional concrete uh, or large stones, I saved those as well. Now the fun part. I took a sledgehammer and broke it all up by hand. Now you might say this seems absurd, but a good workout is never a bad thing. And working on your own property when you know how much it can save you and your family is always a huge motivator. Can't seem to find any more pictures, but that pile of concrete was 8 feet high, 15 feet wide. It was huge. At the time, I wasn't even sure what I was going to do with all that concrete, but after considering my drive options, I opted for this. It was free and here. All the 4 to 5 inch thick concrete I broke up in smaller pieces and laid it along the, the road where I wanted it, probably about a foot thick, dumping load after load with the front end loader then driving over it, which pushed it right into the ground, and then I covered it with sand. The larger pieces of concrete from the foundation, I put them together kind of like a puzzle closer to the shop where it was softer, and that was pushing the limits of that B3200, carrying each of those pieces with chains on the front end. But I got it done. Filled in any voids with smaller rocks that were still sitting around, and then covered it with sand. 
all the while being mindful of water flow and making sure that it was all going to drain away from the shop. Once you put a road in like this with the sub subsurface and millings, water will not get out. You will literally build a moat. Uh, since this picture has been taken, obviously I wasn't done, but I did trench in some tiles and drain caps and anytime water starts to sit in there, it will drain out where it needs to go. Once I thought that the uh, subsurface was secure enough, then I started getting off the road millings from the Wendy's parking lot in this instance and started dressing the top of that. Most of these were actually pretty good quality. They were grade twos, but they typically were about like one to two inch size stones. They might see some of the parking lot paint in them still. And really they only had a couple dozen big chunks over, you know, eight to 10 dump trucks, which is not too bad, $250 a, a truck. Once I had about four to six inches of grade twos, I put on another two inches of the grade ones to give it a better look, a better seal on the top. You could just as easily get grade ones straight out the gate, not even deal with the twos, but like I said, I had easy hookup. Once you spread out the big piles, just run over it with a box blade, lap after lap, and at all the levels. Once you get it leveled out, all you got to do is roll it. I used a thousand pound roller. I don't have anything bigger than that, and it seemed to work well. Get a hot day, I watered it, and I rolled it over, and it packed it pretty well. Now where it was softer, I've got about two feet of concrete, sand, and millings where you'd sink two to three feet before. I've managed future rainwater issues, and this road doesn't budge with a fully loaded dump truck backing up to the shop here. I've had three trucks do that, and it doesn't sink in at all. When it rains, unlike gravel drives, the water washes off the millings rather than through it because there's no, there's no sand. And the only test that's left is snow removal and freezing and thawing. But I bought a new tractor for that and a new snowblower attachment. And I look forward to testing that out soon enough. And maybe I'll even do a video on that. There are likely some downsides too, but most definitely not outweighing the savings. Like you wouldn't want to walk on it barefoot and it might not look exactly as good as concrete or pavement. But it looks fine, especially when cleaned up and it's not dusty or tracking on your shoes. It's just walking on stones. I can imagine it will be a little bit harder for snow removal, but packing it and raising your guide shoes should remedy that with a blower. I'd bet it'd be well over $60,000 in concrete or paved asphalt for what I've done, and it cost me around $10,000. And it's surprisingly even stronger than concrete. And it can be managed or resurfaced with a box blade in an afternoon every spring, and that's about it. In terms of maintenance, it's just that simple. And like I said, it won't track on your shoes, it won't get your truck dirty, car, whatever. Thanks for watching. Maybe I'll do a part two follow up after this winter season's done. Have a good one.